Welcome back! Today I'll be showing you how to make a mock-up or twirl of Vogue 9349. I'll be showing you how to make small fitting adjustments such as letting out the hips and a sway back adjustment to smooth out the back. I hope this video helps you work on your own fitting issues for this pattern, so let's get started! To make this twirl, I bought 1.5 meters of calico to use as the twirl fabric. Choose a cheap fabric with a similar weight and weave as the one you want to make the skirt with. You will also need the usual sewing supplies like thread, a sewing machine and a tape measure. I am also using a bendable ruler, but you can use a flexible kids ruler if you want to. I also suggest using tracing paper to make your adjustments. I suggest cutting out pattern pieces 1, 2, 11 and 12. These pieces make up the waistband and the fitted part of the skirt around the hips. Grab your 12 fabric and fold it in half widthwise. Arrange the pattern pieces onto the fabric to best conserve space. You will need to cut one copy of piece 2 and 12 on the fold. You also need two copies of pieces 1 and 11. Even though this is still a twirl, I suggest matching the grain lines of the pattern pieces to the salvage or fold. Pin and cut these pieces out once you're happy with the arrangement. This twirl is basically a simplified version of the top of this wrap skirt. First off, I'm going to sew the darts onto the back piece which is piece 2. I'm doing this just like with the main fabric. Grab your carbon paper, lay the wrong side of the fabric on top. Pin the pattern piece on top. Roll your tracing wheel on top of the dart marking for your size. Do this for both sides of piece 2. Fold the dart in half. Try to stack the lines on top of a pin to make sure they match. Pin both of the darts. When sewing the twirl, I use a basting stitch, which is easy to unpick and change. To baste, simply change your stitch length to the maximum on the straight stitch. Sew down the length of the dart line. Grab both copies of piece 1, pin both of these copies right side together on top of piece 2. Match the double notch. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. Grab piece 11 and 12 which make the waistband, pin both of these pieces right sides together and match the double notch. Sew them right sides together at 1.5cm. Pin the waistband to the skirt with the right sides together. Match the side seams. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. Take the pattern for piece 11 and pin it to the fabric. Fold back the pattern and mark all four of the dot markings onto the fabric. I'm using a vivid to do this since it can be seen on both sides. On the top edge of the twirl, make markings at 1.5cm from the raw edge. Draw a line over these markings to represent the waistline. When you try on the skirt, fold the fabric along this line. Let's try the twirl on. Wrap the twirl around your hips, with the left side of the skirt going over the top of the right hand side. Bring the first line of dot markings together and pin the two layers. Bring the other set of the dots together and pin. If you haven't folded away the seam allowance at the top, do this now and pin. You can see that I have a few minor fitting issues. 
Firstly, there's some drag lines going diagonally across the skirt and it feels a little tight at the bottom edge. To fix this issue, I'm simply going to let out the side seam slightly at the bottom edge. I'm ripping out the seam and I'm going to repin it with only half a centimetre seam allowance, which graduates up to the original seam line. If your skirt has the opposite problem and is too loose, then you can take it in at the side seams. Next, on the back of the twirl, we can see there's a lot of excess fabric below the waistband and it feels a bit loose. This fitting issue is quite common, basically my back is too curved for the pattern, so we'll need to do a sway back adjustment to fix this problem. Create a horizontal fold on the twirl just below the bottom of the waistband. Pull enough fabric so that all the horizontal creases disappear and pin. Make sure that this fold gradually goes towards nothing at the side seam. Try to make this tuck as even as possible. It's already looking much better. Take your twirl off. Be careful not to unpin any of the fitting adjustments that you made. Grab a pencil and draw on top of the pins that you used to make the adjustments. For the side seam, I decided to take it in slightly above the hip and let it out by about 1cm at the bottom edge. Draw a line to represent the new seam line. For the back, I'm going to draw a line to represent the tuck that I made. Start from the side seam and draw outwards on top of the pin markings until you reach the other side seam. Now move the tuck up and keep drawing on top of the underside of the pins. Take the pins down and draw a line over the markings. At the very centre of the tuck, measure how tall the tuck is. For me, the tuck is about 2.5cm. Grab the pattern for piece 2 and lay it on top at the very centre. Make markings to represent the top and bottom of the tuck. Make another marking for the end of the tuck at the side seam. It should be about 1.5cm from the edge of the side seam. Use the ruler to make a line between the bottom of the tuck at the centre and the end at the side seam. Use a pair of scissors to cut along the line you just made, but don't go into the side seam allowance. Now take the bottom of the cut that you made and move it up to the marking for the top of the tuck. Press the pattern out so that it's nice and flat and the cut is straight. Solo tape it in place when you're happy. At this point I need to add length to both the bottom of the centre back and the side seam, so I'm going to sellotape some strips of tracing paper to these areas. We've taken in the centre back of the skirt by a lot, so it will now be too short. What we need to do is add the length of the tuck to the bottom of the skirt on the side with the centre back fold. For me, I'm measuring 2.5cm on this side onto the tracing paper. I'm then going to use my curved ruler to make a curved line from this marking to approximately the side seam allowance. Next I'm going to make the fitting adjustments for the side seam. On your twirl, make sure you've drawn in the new seam line by drawing on top of the pins. Place your pattern on top of the twirl at the side seam. Trace the seam line onto the pattern. Now draw 1.5cm outwards from the seam line onto the tracing paper. Cut on top of this new marking to make your new raw edge. You can see that I've slightly taken in the pattern above the hips and let it out by half a centimetre below the hip line. At this point, I've changed the shape of the pattern a lot, so I need to trace myself a new copy. Grab some tracing paper and place it on top of the pattern. You should just be able to see the lines on the pattern. Copy the outline of the pattern except for the centre back fold. 
copy off all the pattern markings, such as the dart and circle markings. We need to true the center back fold. Simply draw a line from the top point to the bottom point on the center back fold with your ruler. You can now cut this piece out on the fold as usual. If we place the old and new copy of piece 2 side by side, we can see that the sway back adjustment has lowered the back. This will hopefully help the fabric to conform to the curve of my back better. We can use this as our new pattern piece. Cut this pattern piece out in your twelve fabric. Take your new copy of piece 2 and sew the dark marking just the same. I'm going to check how well the fitting adjustments worked by replacing piece 2 on the twelve. Take your previous twelve and rip off all the seams holding piece two with your unpicker. Unpick the waistband a little more for easy access. The seam line I want for piece one is the pencil line. I'm going to take it in slightly near the middle of piece one, so I'm going to draw one and a half centimeters from this line and cut. This will be the new raw edge. I'm going to move around piece 1 on top of piece 2 so that the seam line is 1.5 cm from the raw edge of piece 2. Pin into place. Make sure that both of these pieces are flat and the ends are together. Do this for both copies of piece 1. Sew these pieces together at 1.5 cm. Pin the top edge of piece 2 to the waistband. Sew to give it 1.5 cm. I'm happy with how the second 12 fits. There's no bagginess in the back and the drag lines in the front have been eliminated. It still has enough space so that I can tuck in the shirt into the skirt. So now I'll copy off all the fitting adjustments that I made to the pattern. Now that we've made adjustments to the bottom edge of piece 1 and 2, we need to adjust every single piece which is sewn onto these pieces. This is piece 3 and 4 for the upper frill, and pieces 5 and 6 for the extension to the lower frill. First off, I'm going to check how much of the bottom edge of piece 2 has changed. Draw out the seam line at 1.5cm on both the original and the adjusted pattern. I'm using a bendable measuring tape to measure the length of the seam line I just did. You can also use a flexible ruler to do this. My new pattern is 1cm wider than the original, so I need to increase the back pieces, which are piece 3 and 6, by 1cm at the side seams. The side seam for piece 3 is the straight side with the double notch. Cut a strip of tracing paper and sellotape it to this side. Make sure that the pattern is flat. Make a marking at 1.5cm on the pattern to represent the seam line. Then make another marking at 1cm to represent how much of this seam needs to be taken out. Make a line with your ruler which goes through this marking and merges with the bottom of the pattern. This will be your new edge, so cut this line out from the tracing paper. Repeat this process for piece 6. The side seam for this piece is also the side for the double notch.
I'm going to adjust piece 1 and the front pieces now. The bottom edge of piece 1 needs to be increased slightly. I'm referring back to the twirl. I'm measuring the difference between the seam line and the line I made with the pins while trying it on. For me, this difference was half a centimetre at the bottom seam line. I'm also measuring how far up the side seam this adjustment needs to be made. My increase of the side seam needs to go approximately 7.5 centimetres up the side seam. Back to the pattern for piece 1. I'm going to tape some tracing paper to the bottom of the side seam. I'm going to add half a centimetre at the seam line. Make a marking at 7.5 centimetres on the pattern. Draw a curved line between these two points. Cut out your new adjusted pattern. So for each of the side seams, on pieces 4 and 5, I'm going to increase the side seam by half a centimetre. Use the same technique for increasing the side seams with tracing paper. Now we're all ready to cut out the main fabric, and the fit should be great! Today we learn how to make a twirl and small fitting adjustments for Vogue 9349. I hope this video inspires you to make your own fitting adjustments for this pattern. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see some more. Thanks for watching!